Putting a custom search on your website allows users to find exactly what they're looking for. On this travel site, we see a post for a gondola ride in Venice. There are a lot of different fields here for price, the type of tour it is, highlights of the tour, the city, and more. With Toolset, any of these can be searchable. On the search page, you see many of the fields that were in the post. We can search by tour type, city, price, and more. Right now, all tours are being shown. But if I choose tours with a food experience and a rating of 4 and above and hit submit, the gondola ride shows up below in our search results. And you can see that it has a food experience and a rating of 4 stars. Okay, let's jump in and create our own search page from scratch and see how this is done. We'll start a new page. Title it. Create a new view and name it. On the second page, let's click on the search option and hit next. And on the third page, we'll be searching and displaying tours. Okay, so here are two sections. The view search is on top. And the results of a search will be displayed by the view output and loop on the bottom. Let's add our first search. Click on Add a Search field. It asks us to select a filter. Basically, what are we going to search for? This list is based on whatever fields were created for the website. You see that the list contains options for the city, highlights, ratings, and more. Let's choose Tour Type, which just so happens to have been created as a taxonomy. Hit Next. And we see it's already labeled as Tour Types, and there's a drop-down button. Now, on the bottom of the screen, we're not showing any results from our search. That's because the bottom section is really just a regular view, just like we've built in the lesson about creating views. It displays whatever fields we choose, such as a post's title, image, body text, etc. The only difference is that the upper section, the search section, will set limits for which posts get shown on the bottom section. Let's jump in and see it in action. We'll add a block, make it a toolset heading block, dynamic, post title with a link, and under that we'll add another block, image, dynamic, featured image, and while we're at it, since we're looking at tour types, let's add another block, single field, taxonomy, and it's already tour types, since that's the only option available. I'd love to save what we have so far and see what it looks like, but we're missing something. Let's go back to the search area and add a search button, otherwise known as a submit button. Let's save and see what we have so far. Okay, so right now each search parameter is taking up an entire horizontal row, but that's easy to style later. For now, let's just see how it's all working. The tour type is blank. We'll choose Family Friendly and hit Submit. One thing I'm not seeing is a way to go back to all of our tour types. That's because there's this blank, which actually is all. Hmm. Let's make sure that users of the site would know that. Let's go back to our setup, highlight our tour types, go to Field Settings, and there's a place to create a label for the first default option. In this case, I'll just type all. Now, the reason that it's not labeled already is that we're pulling in the category labels, and there's no all category. So we need to add it manually if we want it. While we're at it, let's add another search parameter. We'll add a rating. Hit next and we'll move it to be above the Submit button. Notice that the ratings defaulted to be a text box. A user would have to type in a number. Let's change that. Go to Field Settings, and under Type of Control, let's see what Radio Buttons looks like. Hmm, notice it only gives us choices from 3 to 5. Well, that's because the system is smart enough to know that there are no tours with a rating of 1 or 2. But if there were, 
then those radio buttons would pop up as well. If we want ratings to be a drop-down, like the tour types, we can just select that instead. Another thing to notice here is the logic of this filter. A rating is a number from 1 to 5. Under Filter Comparison, the computer will compare the value as a number. This is good, because we are comparing numbers. And on the next line, it will check if the number the user chooses is equal to the number in a tour post. For example, it will check if our gondola post has a rating equal to whatever the user selects. If it is equal, then it will show the tour. So let's say a user selects a rating of 3. Then only tours with 3 stars would show up. But think about it. Normally, you'd want to limit to a minimum of 3 stars. Or, to say it differently, you'd normally want to search for 3 stars and above, or 4 stars and above. So let's change this comparison option to greater than or equal to. And to really emphasize this point, let's click into the label itself and change the name to minimum rating. Moving to the bottom of our screen, let's show ratings in our search results. We'll add a star rating block, make it dynamic, the source is tours and the field is rating. Great. Let's see the front of the site. You see, we can search by any tour type or all. And we can choose a minimum rating. What if we wanted to add in an option for a user to search by text? I think you already know basically how to do it. Let's go to the back of the site and let's add another search field. Choose a text search and hit next. Looking at the field options, we can choose if it will search the post's content and the title, or just the title. And let's remember to move this above the Submit button. It will work below, but it just makes more visual sense to be above. Very often, if you were doing this on your own, probably the last thing you would create would be the Submit button, and it would naturally be on the bottom anyway. Now that we're starting to get a lot of search fields, Let's also add in a reset button so that a user can quickly clear all their search fields and start over if they want to. Click Add Reset button, and that's it. Let's look at the front of the site. And there you go. You now know how to create search pages for your website. And in the next few videos, you'll learn even more search options and how to style your search pages.